yourself out of yourself out of yourself hallelujah let self be slain hallelujah hallelujah we magnify you great god hallelujah even when we don't praise him he is great hallelujah his greatness does not depend on our praise his greatness does not depend on our praise but it is in our best interest to praise the great God hallelujah we praise you God we glorify you God thou art God of all hallelujah thou art God above every other God hallelujah mighty God not, there is Hallelujah. no other God beside our Jehovah. No other God can do the things that he is doing or he has done. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you feel same, not do nothing for you lately. I want you to think again. Hallelujah. Because he continues to be the great God of our lives. Amen. Put your hands together again and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe this morning God really want to show him greatness in this place. Hallelujah. So I, I pray and hope that we are ready. Hallelujah. Praise God. I do acknowledge you this morning. Before you take your seats, let's, let's take the, the scripture. It's taken from Revelation 1. Revelation 1 from 1 to 20. Find it and stand quickly for those who are sitting and you can stand, please do. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. We're reading alternately, I'm sorry. Verse 2. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia unto Ephesus and unto Simna and unto Pergamos and unto Theatira and unto Sardis and unto Philadelphia and unto Laodicea. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle.
and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burnt in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be thereafter. 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. This is the word of the Lord. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you. This morning, I do greet you well, and I also greet the church on behalf of Pastor Marvel, who has sends his love. I do honor all the brethren and the support that you have been giving us while we are away sometimes, and more so for him. I do appreciate your continued support and know that the Lord is pleased with you because you're really not doing it unto me. You're not doing it unto him, but you're doing it unto the Lord. So I know that the Lord is really pleased when we do his work. I do also greet all our guests that are here this morning. Um, we didn't get a first time guest, but all those who would have come in after, I do greet you also. Just in case, we have someone who may not know. My name is Cecile Francis, and I'm one of the ministerial team members here at the church. And we do, we are happy to have you this morning. Happy that you could choose this place of worship to worship this morning. And you are located, we are located at 93 Lysis Road. That's our address. And so we love to tell you, 93 is the place to be. So indeed, we have to say, I really come. Listening to this word this morning, I do believe that the Lord is strategic in what he's doing. And he wants somebody to get this word this morning. Based on, I, based on the flow that I'm seeing in worship and the word that the Lord has given me. So I want you to pray that the word will come forth with clarity. Amen? Are you praying for me? Praise God. Thank you. So we would have read the scripture just now. And Revelation is a book that sometimes we try to avoid. Yes. <laughs> And it is actually a very interesting book. It's hard to understand some aspects of it. Um, but it is a very interesting book that we need to go into from time to time. So I believe the Lord wants to remind someone this morning of his sovereignty and his faithfulness to us. And uh, there's a scripture that also tells us that whom he loves, he... Amen. So... I want us to know that as we go through this morning's um, service, I want you to remember that Jesus loves you. I want you to remember that he is great. And as we declare just now, he is great regardless of whether you are telling him that he is great. He is great regardless of you um, testifying of his greatness. He is just great. He is sovereign. And so this morning, my topic is Revelation in Patmos. And Patmos is a place, I, I, I hope that some of us at least have an understanding, but I'll still go through it. 
Patmos is a place. It is actually an island filled with rocks and deserted and not much life is there, not much plant life or trees or so on. It is, it, the, the, the research makes it seem as if it is somewhere that is far away from civilization. So it is really an island by itself, somewhere out there. Not much plant life, and it's about eight miles long and five miles wide, 40 miles away from the mainland of Asia. While one is in Patmos, it can be looked on like a punishment. It can be looked on like you're left for dead. It can be looked on like you need to be by yourself and just yourself alone. You're not supposed to be with, with, with regular people. So the book of Revelation, and in particular the first couple of chapters, speaks about um, an experience, a vision that John had. And John is the author. He identified himself as... John, and we learned of the relationship, the special relationship that John had with Jesus. Um, we would have learned that while Jesus was on earth doing ministry, we learned of that kind of closeness that he had with John. Here in, in, in um, Revelation, John spoke of seven churches that he was close to. And we would have mentioned them earlier, so I won't go into that because really the message is not going into the vision so much. Or even the message um, that was brought. What the message this morning or the sermon this morning seeks to cover is God's faithfulness. Regardless of if you think, say, I'm faithful to you, he is a faithful God. And his faithfulness is forever and ever. Amen. So as we go through this book, we will see how the righteousness and judgment of Jesus will be revealed in all the fullness and power. Like John, many of us today are going through some situations. Like John, many of us have our tribulations. Many of us are being opposed in one way or another by someone. Somebody somewhere wants to see us dead. Somebody somewhere wants to get rid of us. Whether it is um, you may have done something that hurt them or maybe I just you in a them way. It could be a grudge. We don't know. But... There are enemies out there that really, really wants to see some of us be shipped off into an island all by ourselves, a Patmos experience. They are, um, so, so for John, for John, the relationship that he had with Jesus, we are going to see how it's going to come into play in a very, very useful way and so that is why sometimes as Christians when we are pushing and we are saying that the relationship that you have with Jesus should continue on a very on, a, on an upward path you can't be lukewarm and expect things to be progressing in your life all right so you're either the scripture say you're either hot or you're cold all right but it is better for us to be hot because we want the blessings of the Lord to be on our lives. So we have these situations and we have some Patmos um, experiences some way or another. There are situations in our relationships. There are situations in our families. There are situations at work. And there are situations where for some reason, somebody who may not even know much about you, but you, both of you have like different beliefs. And with that, they want to silence you. So to send us away in, on a wild goose chase or to send us away to Patmos is the plan of the enemy. But today I am here to remind somebody 
that the enemy might be planning a Patmos experience for you. But God, according to his plan, is going to use that Patmos experience and turn it around into something that you have been waiting on. An experience from him. Hallelujah. A revelation from him is going to come into Patmos. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want somebody to hold on to it. Declare it over your life. If you are in a Patmos area, location right now, now in your life, I want you to declare so the revelation going to come right here in Patmos in the name of Jesus. Praise God. So this Patmos experience isolated, yes, whether we're going to lose husband, wife, children, whatever it is that this may come with. It's going to be that catalyst. It's going to be that foundation on which our deliverance will come. Hallelujah. So sometimes, not even sometimes, every time we are going through difficult times, let us try not to lose focus because there is a blessing in all of this. You are a Christian and it means therefore that your belief in Christ should be steadfast. It should be firm. It should be one that we are saying, no matter what or where this is leading me, I believe in the God that I serve. Hallelujah. So with that kind of belief and with that kind of confidence, God is going to come through for you. The Bible said that John said that yes, he was Shipped off to Potmos. Verse 10 says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Which means that if he was in the spirit, it means that there was some kind of relationship continuing between him and his maker. Between him and God. Happening in order for him to still be aligned with God. Amen. Amen. So he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Whatever day you're going to be calling your Lord's day. But the important thing is that he was in the spirit. Once you're connected and you're in the spirit, expect revelation. Wherever you are, wherever your, your, your life takes you, whether it's Potmos or otherwise, you are connected to Jesus Christ. Through the spirit, you're in the spirit. Revelation must come. In the name of Jesus, I pray over this congregation that those persons who are in their Patmos location know, their Patmos territory know, revelation is coming in the name of Jesus. What intrigued me was that John said, that while he was in the spirit, he heard a voice. And the voice says, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, right. So he heard something. He heard a voice. The Bible said that he turned to see the voice. He turned to see who was behind that voice. He wanted to see just naturally because if somebody is saying something behind me, naturally me go turn around to see who it is. So he turned around to see who was speaking with him. But what did he say he saw? Seven golden candlesticks. Seven golden candlesticks was what he saw first. At a glance, you see, you turn around to see somebody speaking, but you see seven candlestick, golden candlestick, which means it was beautiful. In the midst of the candlestick was one like unto the Son of Man. Somebody needs to remember in this place today that Jesus promises that he will be with us. 
No matter where you are, he's going to be with you even to the end of this world. So even in that Patmos situation, he is there. Sometimes it may not be so obvious that he's there. What, what, what really took me by surprise was that the scripture says in the midst, and there were seven candlesticks. Now seven, as I know it, is an odd number. When I want to look on something that is in a middle or midway, and I, and I did a word study on mids, just to make sure that it meant middle. And yes, how can we have a middle in seven? If you look on, at, even at a glance, on six, you're able to see center stage. Three on one side, three on another, don't it? But when you see seven and the scripture is saying that in the middle of it was someone who appeared to be the son of man. Hallelujah. My imagination tells me then that the image which appeared to be the son of man being present in the midst might be a little bit confusing at first glance because when you have that uneven, that even number, as I said before, you are able to see clearly that this is the center stage and that's how it is sometimes in our storms. We just can't decipher if Jesus is actually present because his presence is not always so visible. His presence is not not always so upfront and center stage, but he is right there. Hallelujah. His presence is right there. Mighty God, no matter how rare you think your situation is or how uncommon you think that your problem is, hallelujah, or how dysfunctional your family might be, how uneven the number is, how handicap your body is, is. If Jesus said he is in the middle, it means that he is in the midst of you. Hallelujah. And that's how great our God is. The kind of definition for middle does not necessarily mean that he has to take center stage. It means that he is present. Hallelujah. And if God says he is present, even in your own situation he is present hallelujah we have to hold on to a belief as Christians we must reach a stage and 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 I know you're telling you're gonna say to me that but it is because I believe why I come to Christ but I have been going through maybe a struggle because I keep hearing for a couple weeks that we are losing hope. There are some Christians who are really not believing. There are some Christians who we are at a stage where we are saying, all right, let me see if God really going to do this. Let me see if God is going to come true. And that is not the position that the Lord wants us to take. He wants us to say, I believe that my God, hallelujah, is in the midst of everything that I do. And because he's in the midst, then whatever the result is, hallelujah, to God be the glory, mighty God. So no matter how extreme you think the results that you get from the doctor is, if he says that he's with you, he is with you in the name of Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah. If it is that he says that he is there, it means say him really, did he? So, so, so let us stop being so doubtful about who we are and about what we believe in. There are two words that I learned some years ago while doing critical thinking with Bishop Valentine Rodney. Two words, well, let me first give you the scriptures. Hebrews 10, 23, which speaks of hold fast the profession of our faith. And Hebrews 11, 1, which says, no faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now you see what the words faith in both scriptures. 
But these faiths, these two faiths, actually mean two different things. In Greek, the, the one from Hebrews, um, it's the Greek word is elpis, which means hope, expectation. The one in Hebrews 11 verse 1, no faith is the substance of things hoped for. The Greek word is pistis, which means trust, believe, confidence. It's two different things. So you can have an expectation or a hope like what the one that was used in Hebrews 10, 23. But it is a different thing now when you have a belief or when you have a confidence in someone or in God to say that no matter what or no matter where this road is taking me, I know that I will be safe. When you have a confidence in a principle, a process, a statement, a promise from God, it's completely different from when you are trying to hope for something or when you are expecting that something will turn out another way. You're understanding? So the belief that I am referring to this morning is pistis, the one that is saying confidence, the one that is saying believe Christians, we need to have confidence in the God where we serve because I'm great. I'm great regardless if your situation turn out like how you want it. I'm great regardless of whether you get sick and dead and you ne your, your, your family and you never really want you for dead. I'm great regardless of all of that. Hallelujah. It might be a disappointing result, but it continues to be great. Hallelujah. And there are some promises that he gives us that we must use them in order to propel, in order to push ourselves to the next level. And that is what he's expecting of us. Hallelujah. So stop being doubtful. Stop trying to expect, but instead believe. Have confidence. Hallelujah. Even when you are in Patmos, have confidence. Mighty God, no matter how somebody will try to keep you away from a promotion, from a doing something that you believe is in the will of the Lord for you, it's going to happen. The scripture says, many are the plans of a man's heart, but it is the will of God that will prevail. The will of God over our lives when we have the belief, knowing that he is my provider, is going to provide. Hallelujah. Even in Patmos, you will receive that revelation. You will receive that change that you are longing for. Wherever you are, just have the belief and knowing that the sovereign God that you serve is not a God that is not a man that he should lie. Hallelujah. But if he says that he loves you, and because he loves you, he's with you unto the end of the earth. He is with you. Hallelujah. He is with you. He is in the, he is in the midst of it all. Whether you're looking for the, the even number to say, I am looking between three and four, which maybe would I be trying to off so to look for the middle of this situation, if you're looking on it literally, and I am not seeing who was speaking, or you're just looking that in all of this, hallelujah, seven candlestick 
He is in the midst of it. Hallelujah. He's so great that his midst might just, might just be hovering around all seven. Hallelujah. He's so great that when he is in the midst of a situation, you can't control him to a demographic, demographic location because he is so great. Hallelujah. When he wants to be all over your life, he will be. When he wants to pull back and allow you to make choices, is. He will be, but he is still in the midst. Uh, hallelujah. Can we bless the Lord for his greatness? Yeah. Praise God. So the kind of relationship John had with God, I believe must have contributed to his unwavering faith. We believe this was the same John who was one of the twelve. The same John who was the first to follow Jesus. The one whom Jesus loved. John the one who stood at the foot of the cross with Jesus' mother during the crucifixion. John the one who sat next to Jesus at the last supper and leaned on Jesus' bosom. John one of the three who, who Jesus invited to the mountain where the transfiguration took place. So you, I want you to understand the kind of relationship that he had with Jesus. And so his belief, his confidence was unwavering. Him see, him, him see firsthand the greatness of God. Hallelujah. We did not see firsthand, but we have read and we believe the scriptures. And many of us have been seeing miracles in our lives. Many of us have experienced different things in our lives and that experience should concretize our confidence in God. Hallelujah. So build on your relationship with God because while you're in your Patmos, you should not give up. You should not be feeling hopeless because revelation comes in Patmos. Praise God. So build on your relationship. By now, John would have been an old man. He would have gone through several persecution. He would have known about the gruesome death of the other apostles faced. Um, the other apostles faced, but he was obviously not distracted. He was a threat to the Roman government. So they sent him to the island of Patmos to get rid of him. When you're a threat to Satan kingdom, he might go on lock you down in a Patmos, mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He might go on lock you down in a Patmos. And sometimes when we realize that we are in Patmos, we crumble. But I encourage the church today not to crumble because you realize that where you are is an isolated place. Revelation comes in those isolated places. Bless the Lord. So because he was in that place where he would not rather be, we got the picture that it was a place less than desirable. But we are happy that we're able to see clearly from the scriptures that he did not lose focus. He was in the spirit. He heard the voice. He got the vision. And he started writing. Mighty God. I declare that some persons start hearing and start writing in the name of Jesus. You may not be writing another book of revelation. But there will be revelation for your life. There will be revelation for the church. There will be revelation for the country, for the family. Hallelujah. So I declare in this place, hallelujah, that the revelations will start coming because now you realize that you can't crumble when you're in a Patmos. That is a time when you must be connected to the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we're really slung and we start because we say, God, how me reach you, so? God, why make you allow this to happen to me? But you see, the God that you have the confidence in is saying to you, 
Yes, it might look like a terrible thing, but I have a plan. Hallelujah. I have a plan. It is the time when I want you to take you out of the Uslan bustle in order to speak into you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The seven churches were going through so much and they needed John at this time. But God had another plan. God wanted to speak to John, giving John the message to send to them. Hallelujah. So the revelation will still come, but God needs a vessel, hallelujah. And the vessel, because of the kind of God where we serve, the great God where we serve, he must do it extraordinary, Sister Yvonne. He must do it extraordinary in order for some of us who are reading later to realize that, look, man, this was not just an ordinary kind of experience. He was way off out of civilization, but God was with him. In the name of Jesus, I want to speak to all persons listening to me today. I want you to get it in your mind that God is with you. I want you to tell your neighbor, God is with you. He is in the midst of everything that you do. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Verse 9, John was declaring, he said, me, John, your brother, when he was writing to the churches, he said, your companion in tribulation, which means, say, I'm here, you go through this. Yes, you're my partner in tribulation. We understand the struggles. And in the kingdom of patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle called Patmos for the word of God and for testimony of Jesus Christ. It was because of the word of God and what he has been saying about God that caused the government to send him away. So he, being in this unforsaken place, away from those he was close to, the churches are being attacked and he couldn't be there to encourage the people and pray with them. But he was not discouraged. He didn't get angry with God. He didn't start feeling hopeless and despaired. He was in the spirit. Hallelujah. He was in the spirit. I pray that we will reach that place. When we are in our struggles, we will still be in the spirit. Because there is where God wants to reveal some secrets to us. But we're missing it because we are cussing, we are quarreling, we are complaining. We are looking back on everything that could have gone another way. And we're regretting that God allowed this. But God is saying, trust me now. Trust me. You have to trust me. Me are your God, right? Trust me. Give, give me a little confidence now. I don't know who the word is for this morning, but I know for sure that the word is for somebody here because it has been on my mind. And I hear the worship team pulling out some of the things too that I, I was hoping to share. We need to believe in the God that we serve. We need to understand that Anna, Pia, Pia God is a great God who when him say yes, he's going to do this, it is going to be done. His timing and my timing might be different, but he's going to do it. Amen. Just make sure so you have your close relationship with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So stop wasting time doing other things. Build your relationship with God. Build the relationship with God. Mighty God. John said he turned to see the voice. When he turned around, he saw seven cand golden candlesticks. When we turn around in our situation, sometimes we might be praying for we might be praying for a brown shoes and we get a black one. And we now realize, say, God is saying, I don't want you to wear one brown shoes right now. 
we complain and we're not realizing that God is in the midst of this. He has permitted the black shoes to come your way anyway. Maybe he's testing to see if you are grateful. Maybe he's testing to see how humble we are in wearing that black shoes that might not be so pretty either. Maybe he's testing us. But all in all, he is in the midst because you are God's child. He is in the midst of everything that you do. Don't mess it up. Don't mess it up, children of God. Just build your relationship with God and stay in the spirit. And the revelation is going to come. Hallelujah. Christ is in the midst of everything concerning us. We must always keep that as our belief on which to keep our faith steady and worship him regardless of where we are. John exalted Christ as the most or the all-important God because he was confident that he will not leave us nor forsake us. Even to the end of the world, he will not leave us, uh, leave us comfortless. And lastly, there are three things that John used to exalt God. He said, first, he is the faithful witness. He was faithful in the past to carry out God's redemption plan. Anybody know about that? He was faithful, right? He could have said, God, well, he did say, let this cup pass if it be your will. But it wasn't God's will because the redemption plan needs to come forth. And so he went all the way to Calvary just the same. Some way, somehow, he could have said, I am not going to worry with this. He was sinless. Hallelujah. But he was faithful. So the, the, so, so the point that he made, he says, he is the faithful witness. So he was faithful, church, in the past. And he will continue to be faithful. He will continue to be faithful. Tell the person behind you, he will continue to be faithful. Say it with confidence. He will continue to be faithful. And the second thing was, Jesus was the firstborn from the dead. Because he was faithful, God raised him from the dead. This is the ultimate in hope for the believer because all those who place their faith in him can be assured of rising from the dead as well. So you see, every time doubts come into your mind again about the God where you serve and if we, whether I'm capable or not, I want you to remind yourself of these things. Hallelujah. He died and he rose again. Hallelujah. Because he was faithful, he carried out the redemption plan. Hallelujah. And he will continue to do it. And thirdly, he said, Jesus is the prince of the kings of the earth. Even though the Roman rulers were so cruel and seemed like they were in control, Jesus had the supreme control over the earth. I want you to remember some man have power to do things. But Jesus have the supreme power. And he has control over the earth. Amen. He gives us dominion also. So we must remain in the spirit. Hallelujah. So that we, the dominion can manifest through us. Praise God. He is the same Jesus who loves us. He is the same Jesus who cleanses us of our sins. He is the same Jesus who gives us an opportunity to be a part of his kingdom. And he will come again as our savior and as our judge. Believe, say, the God where you serve, him big. Him big, so tell him, him not have no boundaries. Mighty God. So get rid of doubts. I know sometimes the enemy works on our mind. 
and we're praying about something and we are saying, I wonder if, I wonder if, but this message must remind you, you examine the thing and you realize that it is a part of God's plan, this message will remind you that you must believe that it is done. In the name of Jesus, it's just a manifestation you're waiting on. You may be in a place where you feel you have lost everything. Everything that you love has been taken from you. And you are longing for what you have lost. Which means then that you are on the island of Patmos. You feel alone and you are longing for whatever it is you think you have lost. But Jesus is in the midst. Hallelujah. Encourage yourself. Jesus is in the midst. Encourage yourself. Yes, Jesus is in the midst. He can lift you from one place to the next, even while you are in Patmos. Jesus is actually in the midst. And he has spoken to John on the Isle of Patmos. And he can speak to you in your situation.